data types, string, numeric, and Boolean. A data type is used to identify the type of data a variable will be classified as when used in a program, such as text, integer, or Boolean. Through establishing a variable's data type, it helps the program determine the possible values which can be used for the data and how the program is expected to interpret the values when they are either input or being calculated by the system, as well as let the system know how to store the data in memory so it knows how to use it appropriately through the different functions. So, first thing we need to understand that in order to establish data types, we do that through variable declaration. So when we actually create the variable, we say create the variable as a string or as a boolean or as an integer so that the program will know what to expect from the user when that variable is created and straight away know how to process that data because it already knows what data type it will be. So for example, unless we declare a variable as an integer, a program might not be able to process that value for calculations because initially if we don't declare it, it's probably just going to see it as a string. Okay, just text, characters, all strung together. And that's a data type in itself. But that's the default data type for most programming languages. Some programming languages are smarter than other and they may be able to determine that it is a number being used for calculations, but other languages might just see it as a string and thus won't be able to do those calculations. So let's start now looking at the different data types. So firstly, we have a string which is a sequence of symbols or characters stored together. So as you can see in example, we've just got the word hello, uppercase and lowercase characters strung together and characters themselves are also a data type. Okay, but we're usually not storing one character. That's why we're starting with string here. And then the other example I've got here is hashtag too good. You can see I've got a number there and a symbol there being used as well. Okay all them, those characters and symbols together are also classified as a string. And pretty much that's how they're being seen as a data type, just as symbols all put together to create words or sentences or whatever, but just the characters. The next one we'll look at is that of a date time, which as the name suggests, stores data in a date or time format. This can be adjusted in different programs. It doesn't always have to look the same way. The month and years could be different ways around depending on the country that you're in. Okay, and it could also be the amount of digits being used to create the date uh, could differ. Here you can see that for the year 23, I could also change that to 2023. So I've got to establish that format there too. And then on the time side, you could have it in 12 hour or 24 hour time, or you can make it that the words appear on screen, depending on what you use. But essentially, it lets it know that it's a date time and that is likely to change day to day or minute to minute in the case time or second to second, depending on how you're presenting that on screen, okay, for those data types within your program. And that's what you want from them if you're using that data type. The next one is Boolean, and a Boolean is used to represent a state for data where it can only be in one of two states true or false, on or off. It is often good for option buttons and check boxes or even command buttons where the user is actually selecting true or false. Okay, so it's only in those two options and we want two different outcomes based on those options. So that's the use of the Boolean there. And then the final one we look at is that of numeric, which stores data as a number, which can be used for calculations by a system. Now, obviously I don't have examples here because we're gonna look at subcategories of numeric. So the first one that's most known to people is that of the integer, which is a positive or negative whole number. So the examples of three, zero, minus two, they are whole numbers and they will store the actual number entered into the system as an integer value, meaning I can use those numbers for calculations. Now, unfortunately, that doesn't cover everything. So we've also got some more specific numeric data types. So the next one is that of a floating point, which is numbers that include values after a decimal point. So 0.5, 3.9, or minus 75.9. So as you can see with all of them, I've actually got a decimal point with numbers after it. Now, that might sound like it's covering a lot more area, but unfortunately, that's still not covering all the possible numeric values that could be entered into a system. So the actual final numeric data type is that of a real number. And this is used to represent obviously fractional numbers once again, but also irrational numbers. So in the area of fractional numbers, we're talking about numbers like 2.5 or half. Okay, but then irrational numbers. So numbers where there may be a decimal point, but then the, after the decimal point, it has reoccurring numbers that potentially go on forever. So it could be the square root of the number that doesn't have a whole number as its result, such as the square root of two. 
or a number like pi, okay, which obviously goes on forever as a reoccurring decimal point number. Okay, so a real is used that. So for very specific numbers, and obviously we want accurate values within our systems. Although you might be in at a time where you're doing very basic programming with basic numbers, supercomputers are processing large amounts of data. And obviously some of this data is where we've got numbers with decimal points that go on reoccurring. And, but we need to know the specific amount of numbers after that in order to get accurate calculations of those systems. Okay, so I hope that helps you understand that. And look, overall, I hope this video has helped you understand the use of data types. So establishing what type of data a variable will be when it's entered into the system. We've got string, which is used to represent symbols and characters. Date and time, which represent what they actually say, dates and times. We've got Booleans for representing data that's going to be stored in one of two states. And then the numeric data types used to represent numbers, whether that being whole numbers, negative numbers, decimal point numbers, or irrational numbers. Okay, so make sure we establish our data types when creating variables within our programs.